So this is a great question and it brings up the difference or the distinction between the word void and voidable in a contract. So yes, in almost every contract with a player, there will be a clause in there that will make the contract voidable. And then they usually list out this exhaustive list of, I mean, sometimes it's like that big with tiny, tiny font of all the different things that if you participate in them and you end up getting hurt, it will make the contract voidable. Now let's talk about the difference between something that is void in a contract versus voidable. If some act or something will void the contract, it means when that happens, no matter what, the contract, it's it's void, it's, it's done. However, if it's voidable, it means that the party that did not breach the contract, they can choose to either void the contract or to simply just wave it and say, it's fine, we'll, we'll ignore it. But it gives them the option, the out. So this happened even with recently Madison Bumgarner when he had that dirt biking accident on an off day in Colorado. It gives the teams the ability to say, all right, we're going to get out of this contract. It gives them an out. They can, they can void it, but they don't have to. And a lot of times with contracts like Bumgarner, like Tatis's, a team might look at it and say, sure, we could void the contract, but then he just goes on the open market and now he's a free agent and we're going to have to try to sign. Like, do we want to keep him or not? Unless it's a very player friendly contract and it's no longer a beneficial contract for the team. A lot of times the team will just look past it. They'll waive their ability to void the contract, but there isn't necessarily a fine per se that the player has to pay and it just makes them vulnerable to having the team be able to void the contract if they want.